I'm so glad you've joined me again for some science time today. I really miss seeing each one of you in my classroom each week, but I'm happy that I can at least make these videos for you to watch and learn. If you're watching this right now, I'm really proud of you for putting first things first and doing some learning today. That's really smart. This is an exciting time because we're starting our brand new science unit. This unit is called Life Cycles. Do you know what a cycle is? It means something that goes around and around, like how a bicycle has wheels that go around and around. Think about the word bicycle. It has cycle in it. We also learned in science this year about the water cycle, remember? Which means the water moves and changes, but then it starts all over again. Remember, it rains or precipitates, and then it collects on the ground, and it evaporates up into the air, and it condenses into clouds, and then it falls back down again as precipitation. And it goes over and over and over and over. When scientists talk about living things like plants and animals, we talk about how things go around and around, meaning they kind of go through a pattern and then they start back over again. Let's start out by looking at some really cute pictures. If you know me, you know I love cats. This is one of my cats named Marshmallow. What do you notice about the two different pictures of her? Hopefully you notice that on the one on the right, she looks a lot bigger and older. The picture on the left was taken when she was only two months old, and now she's two years old, and she looks a lot different. She's changed. She still looks like the same cat, but she's definitely grown and changed. That's part of her life cycle, or part of any cat's life cycle, to grow and change like that. In a life cycle, a living thing changes. So a water cycle is not a life cycle because the water's not alive. But now we're talking about a cycle that involves something living, like a plant or an animal, which includes people. That's a life cycle. This is Mrs. Macaulay's new kitten. Look at the two different pictures of him. This is Sonny, if you haven't seen any pictures of him. He's so cute. So look at the one on the left. If you look at that picture, oh my goodness, he's tiny. He's basically only about the size of two of those little bricks. And you can see even his little ears aren't sticking up all the way. Now look at this one on the right that's a little bit more recent. You can tell that he has more fur and his ears are kind of pointing up and filled out. He definitely looks a little bit bigger. I bet if Mrs. Macaulay put him back on that brick wall, he would take up more space, more bricks. He's definitely growing. And he's not done growing and changing because he's still a baby. But we can kind of imagine what might happen in the future and how he might look in another few months. There's another picture of Mrs. Macaulay with Sunny. And my little cat Marshmallow used to be able to fit like that. And now if I did that, I think she would like hurt my shoulder because she's so big and heavy. All right, wanna guess who this human baby is? Any idea? How about this little girl? Can you tell who that is? Do you know her? Both the baby and that little girl are pictures of me, Mrs. Tiller. You might think about me as being really old right now, but just like every other person, I started out as a tiny baby, just like you did. And I grew and I changed. In this picture right here, I was 10 years old. And of course, I've grown and changed a whole lot more since then too, and I'll continue to change as I keep getting older. We call those different, different times of a, a living thing's life a stage. So it's like a stage of life. So being a baby is one stage of your life. Being a child is another stage. I'm in the stage of adulthood right now. 
So with any living thing, those different stages as we go through our lives are called stages, okay? Those different times. These are just some drawings of people changing over their lives. Do you see the pictures of the little bitty babies that can't even stand up yet? And then they turn into little boys and girls and older boys and girls, and they turn into teenagers and grown-ups and eventually much older grown-ups, even very, very old. Most plants, animals, and people end up having babies when they're older. Not all of them, but a lot of people, a lot of plants, a lot of animals have babies in some form. Then those babies kind of start the life cycle all over again. They might grow up one day to have babies of their own. And then those babies will start the life cycle again. That's normal and it happens to every living thing on earth. All plants, all animals, including people. All right, now it's time for you to do something. I want you to draw a human life cycle, specifically you. Think about what you looked like when you were a little bitty baby. Now think about what you look like now as a child. What do you think you might look like when you get to be an adult? How do you think you'll change? And what do you think you'll look like when you're a really old adult, like really old? A lot of times we draw cycles in a circle shape to show that they keep going around and around. In just a moment, I want you to pause this video and go get some paper and something to draw or color with, okay? I want you to draw a big circle in the middle and in the four places around the circle, I want you to draw yourself at those stages instead of writing those words. So instead of writing the word baby, I want you to draw a picture of what you looked like when you were a baby. And then draw yourself as a child now and draw yourself in the stage of adulthood. That one you're gonna have to imagine what you might look like when you're that age, okay? So draw yourself in all those different stages. When you're all done, come back and let's finish up this video, okay? All right, go ahead and push pause and go draw. All right, I hope you have a good drawing of your own life cycle there. Good job. I want you to remember that good scientists use their senses to observe and explore the world all around them. So now it's your turn to be a scientist, your turn to go do some observing. See if you can try doing these two activities before we have science time on Friday again, okay? So look at this slide. It says, now go be a scientist. Number one, how have you changed? See if someone at home, like your parents or grandparents, have any photos of you when you were a baby or a toddler. A toddler is usually around one or two when they start walking. Compare those pictures to what you look like now. How have you changed? How do you still look the same? So that's one thing I want you to try to do. Compare yourself to some old photos, okay? That could be really fun, especially if they're pictures you've never seen before. Number two, I want you to go outside and see if you can find any evidence of plants or animals changing over time or at different stages in their lives. So here are some examples that you might be able to find outside. Can you find some seeds? Okay. Or very small trees. We have a tree at our house that's only about this tall so far. All right. Part B says, can you find some really big trees, big, tall trees that are definitely older in their lives? Can you find flowers? with little buds, the little parts that haven't opened up yet into flowers? Or can you find flowers that have already lost all their colorful petals or they've died? Sometimes they're kind of shriveled up and brown. Can you find a bird's nest with eggs or babies? If you do, don't touch them, leave them alone. Just look. Can you find a caterpillar or a butterfly? Again, don't touch them. Don't disturb nature. Let them 
be there by themselves, okay? Or can you find a puppy or a kitten or maybe some chicks? I know some of our students have chickens at their houses. Maybe you have some baby chicks. I have here a kind of a baby plant. This little piece in here used to be the seed. This is a lima bean seed. And this is the other little piece still hooked on. And the stem and these leaves grew out of that seed. And it's getting so big, I'm probably going to have to go put it in a different, bigger pot. Something to keep it in. So that would be like a baby plant in that stage of life. I also have a picture here. I don't know if you can see that. This is a really special photo for me. So that's me. And of course, that's my little boy, Jacob, when he was younger. And this is my dad. And this is his dad. So we say that this is four generations of people. Because you have the grandfather and his child and his child and then my child. So these are all people in different stages of their lives, part of the life cycle. All right. So that's it for today. I hope you did your drawing. I want you to maybe see if you can find some pictures of yourself and then also go outside and try to find living things in different stages of their lives. That's it for today. On Friday, we'll have another science video and some other activities to do. And we'll look a little more at life cycles of some things that are not just humans, okay? I miss you, friends. Bye.